Welcome to a historical noodle, a forum where discussions about different historical figures and many other topics take place. I'm Ha, your guide and professional rambler for the journey, and I'm glad that you're on it with me. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm a Vietnamese supporter of independent Palestine free from colonialism and oppression. Reading the Vietnamese press, I often find many articles eulogizing Vietnam's ongoing support for the two-state solution and passive call for peace between Israel and Palestine. Perhaps eulogize is a strong word to use in this context, but I think there's loads of sugar coating on the part of the Vietnamese press when it comes to writing about the relationship between Vietnam and Palestine, while the lack of critical analysis of the rapprochement between Vietnam and Israel makes me raise my eyebrows. I cannot help but let my cynicism write a eulogy for the Vietnamese-Palestinian solidarity bond. In this video, I argue that Vietnamese solidarity with Palestine has always been nominal throughout history and devoid of any actual political commitment. Specifically, Vietnam's capitalist aspirations have diluted the historical solidarity between post-revolutionary Vietnam and occupied Palestine, and transformed the solidarity which was initially anti-imperialist into a mere performance nowadays. In the first part, I situate the initial Vietnamese-Palestinian solidarity in the context of Third World Solidarity, which was at the forefront of the international struggle against colonialism. Next, I use examples from public discourses, diplomacy, and the arts to show how solidarity was expressed between Vietnam and Palestine. And finally, I'll put into question the present-day Vietnamese-Palestinian solidarity bond, particularly its performative nature in a post-revolutionary context in which the Vietnam-Israel relationship is now an open secret. Hopefully, more attention and research in the future will further elucidate the complexities and nuances of the solidarity between Vietnam and Palestine in the context of the Third World Movement. Even though Vietnam and Palestine are two different entities with distinct cultures and political characteristics, they were and are both subjected to Western colonial violence. For Vietnam, it was two arduous successive battles against the French and Americans, coupled with a civil war after the withdrawal of American forces in 1973. Ultimately, Vietnam's claim to independence from France was solidified by its victory at the 1954 Dien Bien Phu Battle, as well as the reunification of North and South Vietnam following the fall of Saigon in 1975. For Palestine, it was simultaneously the fight against British colonialism and Zionism, two Western ideologies that worked towards the dispossession, destruction, and displacement of Palestine and Palestinians in their homeland, culminating in the 1948 establishment of the State of Israel, or an Nekbe, the catastrophe for Palestinians, as well as in Israel's succeeding wars on Palestine in 1967, 1973, 1987, 2000, 2008, and 2014, which resulted in the deaths of thousands of Palestinian civilians. Palestine remains occupied to this very day, whereas Vietnam has embraced a free market economy since the reunification of the country in 1975 and the subsequent modernization policies of the late 1980s, known as Doi Mui. The mid-20th century was marked by waves of anti-imperialist struggles and independence movements worldwide, in addition to the onset of the Cold War, which polarized the world into two blocs, the capitalist bloc led by the US and the communist bloc led by the Soviet Union. Although colonized peoples were still reeling from the impact of colonialism, capitalist exploitation and devastation following national liberation struggles, they also had to resist American and Soviet efforts at courting them into a new ideological playground. Moreover, 
Although many parts of the world recently became independent through armed struggle, other parts were still on their path to self-determination or in the shackles of colonialism. Political leaders and leftist activists of colour started crafting an alternative to the imperial bipolarity of world politics and developing a sense of solidarity based on the common experience of shared Western aggression. The solidarity born among colonised peoples around the world, which came to be known as Third World Solidarity, did not fall from the sky out of nowhere. Its foundational roots can be found even in the act of colonising by European powers, as well as in the political and intellectual exchanges predating the 1955 Afro-Asian Conference in Bangdong, Indonesia, and the 1961 founding of the Non-Aligned Movement. Third World Solidarity was the awakening at which colonised peoples reached out to one another and built up a coalition against Western colonial powers that had enslaved black peoples, massacred indigenous communities, and caused wars and bloodshed in Asian, Latin American, and African territories. Third World Solidarity helped colonised peoples reclaim the sense of agency in the face of political subordination and cultural suppression. Solidarity requires reflexive work, that is, to look within ourselves, and reactive and proactive work to challenge the power structures which we are combating. Solidarity, in other words, is a multidimensional, emotional, intellectual, and political project. It was in this context of 20th century anti-colonial struggle that a nascent solidarity bond was formed between Vietnamese and Palestinian leaders and people. Gestures of solidarity between Vietnam and Palestine were made public through many mediums. In this part, I'll dive into public discourses, diplomacy and the arts, to retrace the historical solidarity bond between the two countries in the second half of the 20th century. Vietnam's 1954 victory against the French at the Diet Bien Phu battle was an important source of inspiration for Palestinian leaders and people. The Palestinian Liberation Organization, founded in 1964 as a leftist umbrella organization, regrouping Yasser Arafat's Fetah and George Hebesch's popular front of the liberation of Palestine looked at the Vietnamese revolution for new strategies in the battle against Zionist colonialism. Following the 1967 war, which resulted in the Israeli occupation of Gaza, the West Bank, the Egyptian Sinai, and the Syrian Golan Heights, the PLO started exploring different alternatives to liberate Palestine as its research center produced many studies on international armed struggles against colonialism using the experiences of Algeria and Vietnam as models. Yasser Arafat even sent Palestinian soldiers to Vietnam to study guerrilla warfare tactics. In the PLO's 1968 Palestinian National Charter, or al Mithaq al-Watani al Flastani. The organization mentioned in Article 10 a form of Palestinian popular liberation war, asserting Palestinians' rights to self-determination and struggle against imperialism. Inspired by the newfound military knowledge, the PLO encouraged the working classes and peasantry to take up arms and defend their homeland which eventually culminated in the 1968 Battle of al karama where Palestinian fighters launched guerrilla attacks against Israel from Jordan. In the following year, the International Conference for the Support of Arab Peoples took place in Cairo. Ho Chi Minh couldn't attend the event in person, but sent a message to the conference, proclaiming that the Vietnamese people vehemently condemn the Israeli aggressors and fully support the Palestinian people's liberation movement and the struggle of the Arab people for the liberation of territories occupied by Israeli forces. Ho Chi Minh's solidarity declaration with Palestinians and Arabs echoed many Palestinians' reading of the interconnectedness of the Vietnamese and Palestinian struggles, as seen in this poster produced by Fetah drawing the parallel between Palestine and Vietnam. In 1973, the Paris Peace Accords stipulated that the Americans had to withdraw from Vietnam, 
signaling the imminent Vietnamese victory against the USA. On the occasion of the accords, Palestinian poet and director of the PLO Research Center, Mahmoud Darwish, reflected, The torch has been passed from Vietnam to us. In a similar fashion, the PLO's research center held a roundtable discussion on the Paris Accords in June 1973, praising the success of the Vietnamese Revolution in the face of American imperialism. Diplomatic ties between North Vietnam and the PLO were established in 1968. In 1970, Yasser Arafat visited Vietnam and met General Vo Nguyen Zep, and at this meeting, both Vo Nguyen Zep and Yasser Arafat believed that the Vietnamese and Palestinian struggles were interconnected in the sense that they both sought to overcome colonialism. Yasser Arafat would continue making dozens of visits to Vietnam until his death in 2004. Vietnam was one of the first countries to recognize the state of Palestine in 1988, following the Palestinian Declaration of Independence proclaimed by Yasser Arafat in November of the same year. Shortly after, the Palestinian embassy was inaugurated in the Vietnamese capital Hanoi. At the United Nations, Vietnam has historically supported all resolutions for the rights of Palestinian people at the UN General Assembly. The arts can be considered a form of political discourse due to their critical examination of society and politics. They are also an arena where the artist's emotional, intellectual and political labour gives birth to new political solidarities and possibilities. Such an example of political solidarity can be found in the poetry of Palestinian poet Samih al Qasim. Born into a Druze family in occupied Palestine in 1939, he was imprisoned for his pro Palestinian advocacy and refusal to enlist in the Israeli army, which was a requirement for Druze citizens of Israel. Samih al Qasim translated some of Ho Chi Minh's poems from Nyat Gi Chantu, or the prison diary. From English into Arabic and published them in Al Jadid, a mouthpiece of the Israeli Communist Party, Hadesh. As an editor of Al Ittihad, another Hadesh newspaper, he published the poem Min Athar'a Fil Shaq, or From a Revolutionary in the East in English, in 1964, paying homage to the Vietnamese independence struggle and aligned the Palestinian struggle with that of the Vietnamese, along with that of African revolutionaries. Such a bond with the Vietnamese struggle can be seen in the first few lines of the poem. لا يصدق الكلام وتحمي الأريح ولو سلام من ثار في الشق لثارين يشتلون النور في الظلام لثارين إخوة لا فرق في النيل في الكونغو وفي فيتنام. And the translation in English. If the words are true, and carry the wind and peace, from a revolutionary in the east, to the revolutionaries planting fire in the darkness, to the fraternity of revolutionaries there's no difference, in the Nile, in the Congo, in Vietnam. In visual arts, Ismail Shamut the Perlos Director of Arts and National Culture designed a poster around 1972 featuring a North Vietnamese soldier passing the flag of victory to a Palestinian resistance fighter. The red and yellow colours of the poster are reminiscent of the North Vietnamese flag. The character's sense of comradeship is emphasised by the same uniform which they both wear, in spite of their cultural differences. The Vietnamese soldier wears his native non la or conical hat and stands on the right side of the poster, just above the word Vietnam in Arabic, whereas the Palestinian resistance fighter dons his kufiya and stands on the left side of the poster just above the word Palestine, looking back at the Vietnamese soldier for inspiration. What's interesting is that the Arabic language is read from right to left, and Vietnam's geographical position is in the Far East, meaning that Vietnam is further to the right-hand side of Palestine, which makes so much sense for Arabic speakers to understand the spatial positioning of the two main characters. And despite the geographical distance between Palestine and Vietnam, 
Both countries became closer politically and ideologically as they shared a common struggle against Western colonialism. The Palestinian fighters marched towards the left side while holding an AK-47 is not without symbolism. This directional mise-en-scene portrays the ideological alignment between Palestine and Vietnam, as both countries espouse leftist politics as the only transformative political project to engender changes to their material conditions. The presence of the AK-47 is crucial in the sense that it is the signature weapon of not only the North Vietnamese army and guerrilla warfare, but also the symbol of many national liberation struggles around the world. For example, the flag of Mozambique bears an AK-47, which is a reminder of the Frente da Libertação de Mozambique's leftist armed struggle to gain independence from Portugal in the 1960s. Another example is this picture of former Chilean President Salvador Allende holding an AK-47 which was a gift from Fidel Castro and with which he committed suicide when the US-sponsored Chilean coup was about to overthrow him in 1973. The historical landscape of leftist solidarity between Palestine and Vietnam in the 20th century reminds me of the last sentence of Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto. Proletarier alle Länder, Vereinigt euch, or proletarians of all countries, unite. Vietnamese and Palestinian leaders drew many parallels between their struggles against Western imperialism and interpreted each of their battles via a leftist ideology, which carries the potential to transform their material conditions and realities. Nevertheless, what happens when the revolution has succeeded, especially in the case of Vietnam? that this leftist-inspired solidarity beget any meaningful commitment to a just and anti-colonial political collaboration? Today, Vietnam seems to have embraced a socialist-led model of free market economy. Following the introduction of Doi Mui or modernization policies in the late 1980s, this reconstruction project, after decades of devastation and warfare, set Vietnam on the path of economic opening to the international market, as the country has attracted many foreign direct investments and sown strategic ties with developed and emerging economies over the past three decades. While Vietnam is continuing its path to establishing and entrenching free trade agreements with the European Union, North America, and most recently Israel. The territorial integrity of Palestine and the rights of Palestinians are incessantly threatened and erased. Palestinians have to live in a reality in which Gaza is still under siege and the continual theft of Palestinian lands by Israel is met with zero accountability. For decades, Israel has also deployed draconian measures such as checkpoints, the apartheid war, public killings and arbitrary imprisonment of Palestinian civilians and children to oppress and rob Palestinians of the dignity and right to self-determination. Vietnam and Israel established ties in 1993 when Israel opened its embassy in Hanoi, almost three decades after the establishment of ties between North Vietnam and the PLO. In 2009, the Vietnamese embassy opened in Tel Aviv and Vietnamese-Israeli relations have reached many milestones over the past two decades. Vietnam is Israel's closest ASEAN partner and serves as a transit point for Israel to trade with other Muslim countries in ASEAN, such as Malaysia or Indonesia, to circumvent the political barriers surrounding the question of Palestine. As of the making of this video, Vietnam and Israel are still holding free trade agreement negotiations which are nearing the last round. Vietnam's rapprochement with Israel is what I call an open secret, despite its nominal support for Palestine on the international scene. Vietnamese cooperation with Israel ranges from agriculture, high-tech, to the military industry and arms trade. As a large part of the Vietnamese economy still depends on export agriculture, Vietnam relies on Israel's agricultural expertise and settler colonial agricultural industry which was founded upon the dispossession of Palestinian lands in order to acquire knowledge on the cultivation of crops in arid climate. Furthermore, 
Many high-profile leaders of the Vietnamese government and high-ranking officers in the Ministry of Public Security have made visits to Israel, and in return, Israeli officials have paid many visits to Vietnam to strengthen defense and economic cooperation between the two countries. After researching and making this video, I'm left with several unresolved questions. What happens after a revolution? If revolution is a continual process to transform reality, when and where does it end? Does it engender something new, or does it restore the former status quo which is sought to abolish? In Les Damnés de la Terre, Franz Fanon warned us of the ascent of a new bourgeois elite in supposedly post-colonial countries, replacing the old colonial rulers, and looking at Vietnamese-Palestinian relations. I cannot help but wonder how we can make sense of post-revolutionary solidarity in a capitalist system. Should we sacrifice ethical alliances for the pursuit of self-interested politics? I cannot answer these questions for now and I'm not sure if I will ever be able to. My hope for Vietnamese-Palestinian solidarity is little to none, considering the current state of global politics and the recent trend of Vietnamese foreign and economic policies. Nevertheless, I will make the historical evidence of Vietnamese-Palestinian solidarity presented in this video as a resource for new political possibilities, instead of immersing myself in nostalgia for lost times or in mere cynicism. Sometimes, a government's actions don't represent the beliefs and convictions of the people, and I'm sure that there are many like-minded Vietnamese like me who support Palestinian rights. To replant the seeds of solidarity, we must be brave and address the excesses of capitalism which has drifted us apart in our own self-interested pursuits of economic growth in order to empathize with the continual struggle of Palestinians. We must educate ourselves and be ethical allies to Palestinians in a battle by listening to their stories and by supporting the many anti-colonial initiatives, namely the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, modeled after the anti-apartheid movement that was at the forefront of the fight against the South African apartheid regime. In times where interracial solidarities are being revived, most prominently black Palestinian solidarity via mutual understanding of anti-black and anti-Palestinian racism, Vietnamese and Palestinians ought to look within ourselves and our histories and hopefully we can see the common struggles that once united us and will reunite us in the near future. Thank you for watching this video and listening to my thoughts. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below and please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Cheerio!